cities will soon change dramatically. They have to, because buildings are the largest contributor to carbon dioxide emissions, and scientists warn that if we don't change course, major cities will be underwater within decades. New York is planning to ban the construction of glass skyscrapers, and vertical forests are springing up around the world. We'll show the world's most impressive examples, why they are the future of all our cities, and how they compare to this. You're watching Digital Engine. Google and Facebook seem to be competing for the best rooftop park. Google's billion pound new London office is a land scraper, longer than the city's tallest building is tall. On Facebook's roof, you can walk half a mile through over 300 trees. But the most striking rooftop park belongs to Germany's forest spiral. The building was designed to avoid straight lines. No two windows are the same, and all the doors and windows have different handles. Green roofs have some huge hidden benefits. New York's largest green roof has attracted 300,000 bees and 25 species of birds, and it absorbed 7 million gallons of stormwater. That's a big deal, because when there's too much rainwater, sewage is released into rivers, creating a major source of pathogens. And this can happen hundreds of times in a year. If all of New York's roofs were green, it could absorb over 10 billion gallons of stormwater annually. The cooling green roof also reduced energy use by 26%, saving $3 million. The US uses as much electricity for aircon each year as the UK uses in total. And by 2050, the world is expected to have 4.5 billion air conditioning units, roughly the number of mobile phones today. Glass skyscrapers need extremely powerful air conditioning systems, and New York's mayor plans to ban their construction. He points out that they are the number one cause of greenhouse gases in the city, and he says they have no place in our city or on our earth anymore. Is he right? Are we seeing the end of glass skyscrapers? We'll get to this, but first, let's explore the alternatives. Trees can help reduce the need for air conditioning. They provide natural cooling, with solar shading in the summer that falls away to let heat through in the winter. Singapore's Park Royal Hotel shows how trees can be integrated with tall buildings. The terraces, based on rock formations, offer 15,000 square meters of greenery, around double the area of the site. In Singapore, nearly all new buildings are rich with greenery, with the government covering up to half of the cost. The Garden City is aiming for a million new trees by 2030, and 80% of the city's buildings will go green. In the Netherlands, Utrecht has gone a step further, requiring all buildings to have green or solar roofs. The living walls of London's City Cape House will host 400,000 plants. Every year they will capture 8 tons of carbon, while producing heat and sound insulation. The building will include a 5-star hotel, offices, a sky bar, spa, restaurant, and, of course, a rooftop garden. In Japan, walking above Fukuoka's cultural building is like entering a thick forest with pristine waterfalls. Designed to extend a park, when it was first built, there were around 100 different plants and trees, and it has grown far more dense and diverse thanks to seeds dropped by birds. At a million square feet, it shows that shops, offices, and theaters work beautifully with virtual forests. In Shanghai, Heatherwick Studios' Thousand Trees project is designed to look like two tree-covered mountains with layers of sedimentary rock. It uses structural pillars to hold planters as if tree roots have grown up through the building to blossom on the roof. One of the structures will open soon, containing shops, restaurants, and offices. In Taipei, the Agora Tower will hold 23,000 trees and shrubs, almost matching New York's Central Park. The twisting DNA-based design creates extended balconies where residents will grow their own food, with vegetable gardens and fruit trees, and compost their waste. Singapore's Oasia Hotel has torn apart the idea of a skyscraper. 40% of its volume is used for green, open-air terraces, cooled by the wind. Its red aluminum mesh allows 21 species of creepers, plants, and flowers to climb its 60-story walls. They cool the building and the area around it by reducing the heat island effect. 
And before we reveal our favorite vertical forest, here's a quick look at two beautiful ideas for the future. This timber-framed tower proposed for Toronto resembles a tree in itself. It uses highly compressed wood called cross-laminated timber, which is extremely strong. The architects believe it'll take over from concrete and glass as this century's wonder material. And the same team designed this stunning new hotel concept. The bamboo frame uses joints that require no screws or nails, only rope. And the modular design can be easily scaled horizontally or vertically. The idea is to help guests experience forests like children climbing trees. Now here's our favorite vertical forest. Milan has shown that tall apartment buildings can carry trees beautifully. Bosco Verticale, or Vertical Forest, tethers trees with wires for safety in high winds, while the fire risk is managed through regular irrigation and pruning. Each tower houses 900 trees and 16,000 plants. With more than 90 species, the building attracts new birds to the city. Architect Stefano Boeri is now working on projects in Switzerland, the Netherlands, and Africa, and the world's first forest city, which we'll explore later in the video. So are vertical forests the future of our cities? Is New York's mayor right about the end of glass skyscrapers? In their current form, yes. Most building-related carbon emissions are from energy use. Bahrain's World Trade Center has three wind turbines, each 30 meters in diameter. The buildings are designed to funnel and accelerate winds through the turbines, which generate enough electricity to power around 300 homes. But even this only covers 11 to 15% of the building's energy use. Lower buildings can use rooftop solar power and rainwater harvesting. But we do need tall buildings too. They reduce our environmental footprint and emissions from transport, which account for 29% of all US carbon emissions. We need forest cities, like this one in Mexico by Stefano Bueri. It will generate all its own energy through a perimeter ring of solar panels and an underground water system connected to the sea. The city, a major hub for environmental research, will only allow entry for electric cars. Meanwhile, in China, the world's first forest city is already under construction in a mountainous southern region. Every building from schools and offices to hospitals and homes will be covered in greenery. Run on renewables, it'll hold a million plants and more trees than people with extraordinary results. Every year, it's expected to absorb 10,000 tons of carbon dioxide and 57 tons of pollutants. That's a huge leap from the toxic air in some areas of China, which can be as deadly as smoking. Many countries are exploring plans for green cities. This lattice design creates extensive living space while freeing up the ground level for nature reserves. Bold solutions are urgently needed. To meet the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement and avoid a climate catastrophe, all buildings must be carbon neutral by 2050. But emissions are currently projected to double by this date. If our cities don't adapt, they will seal their own fate. Scientists project that we are on course for many of them to soon be underwater. At the same time, with farmland drying up, people will look to cities for work. And economists project a major climate-driven depression that would make it difficult to rebuild. Plants and trees achieve more than our climate goals. They filter air pollution, which kills millions, and they reduce noise and stress. The vertical forest is an ecosystem. We have more than 21,000 plants. So we have the equivalent of two hectares of a real forest in a very small surface at the center of a super polluted and dense city. For every human, we have two trees, 10 shrubs and 25 plants. We have more than 20 different species of birds that are nesting there. So I consider the construction of a vertical forest one of the most efficient way to deal with climate change. What do you think? Would you want your town or city to go green? And would you be happy living in a vertical city with the ground reclaimed by nature? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.